Heartbreaking images seen by billions. Public protests across the globe. The US isolated by the world. Massive profits made by arms makers. And the world's richest country is accused of the most heinous of all crimes, genocide. Goodbye, Western dominance. We are watching the end of minority rule over planet Earth in real time. We're seeing it in individual clips as if it was like an episodic drama series on, on real short. But this is serious. The shocking slaughter and destruction in Gaza marks the end of the West as the self-proclaimed leader of the free world. There's nothing free about what's going on today, sisters and brothers, as we can all see. Now, the end of Western rule is good news for everyone, including the 13% of humans who live in the West. The USA, Israel and the UK have shown that our values make us the natural leaders of the world. I'm out of here. Wait, we're all coming with you. Here's the thing. Western rule over this planet has always depended on two things. The first was the, the US stranglehold over the world economy through the US dollar. And the second was the, the Western death grip on the global narrative with which the West painted itself as humanity's natural moral leader and everyone else as morally inferior. Not just inferior, but actively evil. The free world versus the unfree world. Democracy versus authoritarianism. The good guys versus the bad guys. You know, the bad guys, of course, being people like the Chinese, who, who we're told are constantly on the verge of invading literally everyone everywhere. What to do? People should buy more guns, divert more money to the military. The Chinese are invading. That's the message in every mainstream paper. Even The Guardian and The New York Times do this relentless China bashing. But things are changing. Western economic dominance is crumbling in multiple categories. I've talked about that in videos such as this one. Meanwhile, the claim about the superiority of the free world has been on its deathbed for a long time, and recent events have finally killed it. Stone dead. It's not me saying this, it's the West's top commentators too. I don't think Israelis or the Biden administration fully appreciate the rage that is bubbling up around the world over the deaths of so many thousands of Palestinian civilians, particularly children, with US-supplied weapons in Gaza. So wrote Thomas Friedman in the New York Times. We know the international community doesn't like America playing world policeman, but even Americans are losing faith in that role, as surveys like this reveal. And here's what the observer's Simon Tisdall said. These findings only serve to reinforce the view, taking root among European and Asian allies, that US global leadership, dominant since 1945, is experiencing epoch-ending terminal failure. Here are six data points. Number one, its official Western leaders are lawbreakers. They've clearly violated international statutes, a top United Nations body confirmed on Friday, 23rd of January. By supplying weapons and ammunition for Israel to use on the Gazans, the nations are violating the 1949 Geneva Conventions, the Arms Trade Treaty and other laws, said the Special Procedures Group of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations. Now, who exactly did this terrible crime? The US and Germany are the main violators, with UK, Australia and Canada following closely behind. Most of the Western mainstream media forgot to print this story, but it's getting out there anyway. Number two, leaders of the global West are defying the United Nations top court. Specifically, they're ignoring the International Court of Justice's order that the Western-backed slaughter in Gaza must stop at once. A demand issued on January 26, 2024. That was when it ordered an immediate halt to actions causing death, destruction and acts of genocide in Gaza. What happened? The Israeli authorities and the Western nations supplying killing machines simply carried on. The world has not missed the fact that they completely ignored the ruling. That will have consequences. Number three, it's been revealed that Western leaders don't want negotiations towards peace in Ukraine. They secretly rejected peace talk proposals from Russia at least twice. The United States and the UK led the world to think that Russia was refusing to negotiate while secretly rejecting actual proposals. You know, that's not right. 
In fact, the whole Ukraine narrative is turning upside down. U.S. businessman uh, David Sachs went viral for the way he put it into words just a few days ago. The war in Ukraine is based on lies. Lies about how it started, how it's going, and how it will end. We are told that Ukraine is winning, when in fact it is losing. It's clear now that the whole awful episode has been a moral disaster. Infighting among European nations and among political groups in the US means that the whole thing will get worse. Number four, Western leaders' hypocrisy over Julian Assange is clear and is now being lamented globally, I'm glad to say. A hearing for the long jail journalist this month put him back in the spotlight. He famously said that modern wars were built on lies spread by the mainstream media. Today it's impossible to miss the fact that the US is working really hard to provoke conflict with China and the Western mainstream media is playing its usual part, cultivating hostility against the Chinese to manufacture consent for yet another US-backed war. As Colonel Richard Black said, when your economy is based on the military, you need an endless stream of wars. The, the war industrial complex must have enemies. You cannot manufacture weapons when you don't have enemies. And so we create this illusion that they're coming to get us. They're, they're on our doorstep. And the fact of the matter is that China is out to make a buck. They want money. Uh, they, yes, they, they, uh, the, the Belt and Road Initiative is very important, but they have a different paradigm. Our paradigm is we, we go into a country, we set up uh, NGOs, uh, we take over you know, the government by coup. If we can't, then we just, we just bomb the place to smithereens half the time. And you compare that with the, with the foreign policy of China, which is you go in, you work with whatever government is there, you don't, you don't, you're not judgmental, but you make hard business decisions, you make investments. And uh, I think for people who are comparing the foreign aid paradigm of, of the U.S. and China, they're saying, you know, uh, my, my, uh, my likelihood of surviving is much higher if I follow the Chinese paradigm. So we, we, need, we need to just get away from this feeling that we have to constantly be at war with the entire world. Number five, Western leaders are guilty of the biggest act of environmental terrorism in modern times. In 2022, the US said it wanted Russia's Nord Stream gas delivery pipelines to Germany destroyed. It had the power to destroy them and it would act accordingly. There will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. What do, what, how, will you, how will you do that? I promise you we'll be able to do it. On September 26 of that year, the pipelines were duly destroyed. I think the situation is best described in this meme. Who hates the Russian pipelines? USA. Who tried to stop them being built? USA. Who said they would destroy them? USA. Who benefits from their destruction? USA. Who destroyed them? We have no idea. <laughs> Meanwhile, EU head Ursula von der Leyen pledged to punish whoever did it. But when it was revealed that the detonation came from either the US and or the Ukrainians, she immediately forgot all about it. That came as a huge surprise to absolutely no one. Number six, it's now widely known that Western leaders create conflicts for profit. Military experts in the West openly acknowledge this. Washington-based author Andrew Coburn has given example after example of how US and NATO foreign policy is driven directly by the need to boost the profit margins of weapons makers. Example, in the Korean War, the cut price boots worn by US soldiers were so bad, the soldiers ended up raiding the supplies of the North Korean soldiers to steal their footwear. One soldier said, the richest country in the world is literally stealing the shoes of people in the poorest country in the world. Can't blame him for being upset, can we? Now, it's important to note that while the world is dismayed by many of the decisions made by Western leaders, this doesn't mean the world is against Western people. On the contrary, who could not feel sorry for people who have these individuals as the only choices for leaders? I believe the people of all regions of the world, including the West, want a peaceful, multilateral world. 
But how do you get that message across when the Western mainstream media completely dominates global discourse? They get clicks by fear mongering, and almost all of them are pushing for more weapons sales. Here's a typical article from the Times of London this week on the need to spend more money on nuclear bombs. As the threats intensify from the autocracies, China, Russia, Iran and North Korea, newly wealthy states will wonder whether they need such weapons. Yes, yes, everybody needs to spend more on bombs and guns. You know, that's what certain journalists and politicians want. But I don't believe it's what the people want. You know my catchphrase, the grasshoppers are big, but there are more of us ants. We need to call for a peaceful world. Here's Colonel Richard Black again. Where has China have fought? Who have they invaded? They've had a couple little border, border disputes, but that's it. They, they don't invade people. We invade people. So we need to get away from this illusion. If we could ever break away from the illusion that they're out to get us, which is totally false, then we could start chopping back on our, on our defense budget. World tensions could re reduce and we could get back to making cell phones or whatever we do for a living and, uh, and have a, a genuine economy that wasn't based on killing people in foreign countries. That's what we ought to do. We have to get our message across by bypassing the media and sharing information in other ways, through sharing video clips, through, through talking on groups on WhatsApp or WeChat or Telegram, through social media, through individual conversations with friends in coffee shops. You know, one by one, clip by clip, coffee by coffee, we can get the truth out there. Peace. <laughs>